let's get started here. So as you know, my name is uh, Tim Campbell, and uh, the purpose of this webinar is to talk about the six steps to building a business that will be able to work without you. So a stronger, more profitable business. Uh, we all know that uh, being in business is, is a tough gig sometimes. It can be one of the loneliest jobs there is. So first of all, I wanna thank you guys for joining us uh, this evening to find out what business coaching is and to grow your business and to learn strategies of how to grow your business. Uh, we, we say there's six steps to growing your business and that's what we teach here at Action Coach. And we find that by doing it this way, a systematic methodology, uh, which by the way, we've been doing for over 26 years, has helped tens of thousands of companies. So many of you have probably um, made mistakes in your life. Is that fair? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, how? Just fun question here. How many would say that you're experts at making a mistake? If you want to go ahead and use the chat box and, you know, raise up your hand or just shout out uh, answers throughout, uh, go ahead and do that. So for me. Um, I actually have to raise up both my hands and sometimes even my leg because uh, you know, I, I definitely have made a lot of mistakes in my life. And, and if we think about when we were kids, right, we learned to walk by falling down and it was never called a mistake. Right? The, the, the people that loved us encouraged us and motivated us and gave us love and support. So all we knew is that we were doing exactly what we were supposed to. So then what happens when we become adults? we're taught that we can't fail, right? So then we stop putting ourselves out there for some crazy reason. So uh, I guarantee that uh, you're gonna learn some specific steps, ideas, and strategies to help you stop making mistakes in your business and be a better business leader. But here's the catch. You must choose to put yourself out there and take action. So if you just sit and listen to what I'm sharing this evening, you're gonna absorb about 7% of the information. If you take notes, that increases to about 50%. And if you participate, meaning, you know, things like interesting here is if you write in different colors, you actually engage both the left and the right hand side of your brain. If you raise your hand, when I say, you know, when I ask you questions about raising your hand or you respond to questions that I ask, all of that participation uh, actually increases your retention to 98%. So the only failure then is what? Call this out for me. It's the failure to do what? Take action. Yeah. So yeah, the failure to, in this case, the failure to participate or the failure to take action. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you give 100% throughout this presentation, then you're going to get 100% back to you in terms of that retention level of 98%. So then at the end of the seminar, I'm also going to ask you to take action and I'm gonna present you with an offer that you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of. So can I get your commitment that you're gonna participate and take action throughout this webinar? Will do. Yeah. Awesome, fantastic guys, thanks. So a little bit about me, my background. I was born and raised in Canada, I moved to the US in 2005. I started working at the age of 15, running a local gas station where I opened the store on the weekends at uh, six in the morning while the owner slept in. The fact that I'm from Canada means that you're gonna hear some words that you think are pronounced wrong. Uh, I guarantee that in my head, it sounds the same as it, it's supposed to sound to you. But for some strange reason, everybody tells me there's a couple words that sound really funny. So uh, when they come out, you will uh, just know that they, they sound right in my head. <laughs> um, so then for the past 28 years, I've. I've had a very successful career of managing businesses and coaching teams within the corporate, the corporate world. I've had different experiences on businesses that you probably all know very well, like Kentucky Fried Chicken, Raid, Off, Ziploc, Ram Wrap, Edge and Skin Intimate Shave Gel, Scrubbing Bubbles, Pledge, Fantastic, Sargento Cheese, uh, and Red Gold Tomatoes. These businesses have ranged from 1.5 million in revenue to over 500 million. In that same time, I've coached, trained, taught, and mentored well over 200 people. People I've coached have gone on to become vice presidents, presidents, and even a CEO of corporations here and in Canada. This is my why. 
So my family here on the far left, my oldest stepson, Tony is 25 and his brother uh, Enrique is uh, 20 and they both live up in Milwaukee. My beautiful wife, Petrita, and then our uh, little guy who claims that he is no longer little because he just recently turned 13. Um, I've chased my career over the past 10 years, which has required us to move frequently and it's had a negative impact on my family. My wife's in a 100% commission sales career, so every time we move, it takes her three to four years to rebuild her business, and I've been moving us every three to four years, which has definitely hurt her career. This coupled with the fact that corporations have been focusing less on employees and more on profit led me to realize that this life was no longer fit for me or my family. Additionally, uh, when I growing up, I got teased for not having brand names because my parents could not afford them. Uh, then my get, dad got hurt at work and was unable to, to continue to work. So things got pretty tough financially. So as a result, I've always had a, a heart and a passion to help others. I was a peer counselor in high school, as a lay counselor at church, as a big brother for uh, over eight years in uh, Milwaukee. And my, one, my number one priority at work has always been to coach, train, and mentor folks to be able to, to achieve their goals. And my passion is to help others become all that they can be. So with my business experience and my desire to help others, it was a natural to uh, move into business coaching as I know there's thousands of business owners who can benefit from my help. So a little bit about um, Action Coach. I chose Action Coach um, because I believe it's the best option to help me realize my vision, which is to make a difference in the lives of every successful business owner uh, in the greater Indianapolis area and beyond. Um, as Jay's here up from uh, all the way up in Chicago. And the way that I make that difference is by helping them to achieve massive results. I coach them to implement a proven methodology that over time builds a great team, gives owner owners time back for family and friends, while also having a more successful growing business that provides the money needed to realize their life dreams. So Action Coach is a franchise. It's privately owned. Um, by the founder, Brad Sugars, who is an entrepreneur and author. The vision of Action Coach is world abundance through, through business re-education. And what that means is that for those business owners who take the time to learn how to run a great business, to re-educate themselves on how to run a business, um, the sky's the limit. Uh, that's where that world abundance comes in because if you're running your business according to best practices and all your competitors are not, then you are going to reap the, the, the fruits of your labor. Um, as a, a franchise, we coach over 15,000 businesses each week around the world. We are the number one business coaching firm in the world, and here's a number of accolades. And we've got over 1,000 offices in 80 countries around the world. We've been in business for over 26 years. We're actually the ones who created the business coaching industry 26 years ago. So my purpose as your coach is really to, to help you as business owners make a lot of money. It's about helping you improve your business so that uh, you can work less and make more, which ultimate, ultimately sounds too good to be true. And the reality is that it would be too good to be true if it wasn't for the fact that we've been doing it with tens of thousands of businesses around the world. The system's not based on theory, it's based on practical experience with real businesses achieving real results. So as a thank you for your time attending this uh, webinar, uh, here are three things that I'm going to reward you with. First is to show you how to increase sales and profits. Second is to show you how to free up your time and then lastly is to show you how to create an amazing team. But before we get into the meat of the program, uh, I'd like each of you to, to share again what your number one learning goal is for this webinar. And uh, please go ahead and write it in the chat box. Or if you wanna just say it out loud, that's fine too, because there's a smaller group here. Whatever's easier yeah, I think for you. That'd guys. Be easier for me. Yeah, go ahead. Just shout it out then. Yeah, so for me, I think 
building an amazing team and getting more free time and learning how to work smarter, not harder. I think those are the biggest things that will impact me. Jay, how about you? Um, well, kind of like what, what we talked about before, uh, you know, not being so overwhelmed, getting, getting these systems in order. Um, obviously the people and the technology, uh, putting all, put all the pieces in place so I can finally, um, you know, not have to stress as much as I am right now. Um, you know, trying to organize it all. But yeah, that's probably the, the biggest thing, getting over this hump. And then after that, it should be smooth sailing. Awesome. Fantastic. So what you guys just did by stating your goal is you triggered what's called your reticular activating system. So have you guys had an experience where you've bought a car and then as you start driving it the next week or two, you seem to notice that everybody around you has the same car? Yep. Yeah. So it's not really that everybody bought the same car that you did. It's that you told your reticular activating system or your RAS for short that that, that new car is important to you. And so now your subconscious is looking around to find that car for you because you said it's important. So your RAS is the part of your brainstem that controls your level of consciousness, and it's incredibly powerful. Our subconscious spends all day working in the background to achieve the things that we tell it are important. So when we set goals, we give our subconscious specific direction on what, on what to work for on our behalf. So by you guys sharing your goals, you've told your RAS to pay attention during this webinar to find answers to those questions that you have. So have you ever had an experience where you couldn't solve a problem all day, but after a good night's sleep, the answer seems to come to you in the morning? Yep. Mm -hmm. So again, that's your reticular activating system working on your behalf. So uh, imagine you know, how powerful that can be if we write out our, our goals for our business and allow our subconscious to work on solving those goals for us. So to be as successful as a business owner, you must have at a minimum yearly goals, quarterly goals, monthly goals, weekly goals, and ideally daily goals. So that, again, your subconscious can be working on that on your behalf. So if you don't have, your, if you don't have goals for your business, that's one of those notes I would suggest that you write down to yourself is to make sure that you, you write out your goals for your business. And really, right, you wanna make sure that you've set that compass for your, your subconscious to be working on, for, on your behalf. So have you guys ever heard the phrase, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again? Mm -hmm. okay. So yep. most people say they'll try, but the reality is, is you can't try. You either do something or you don't do something. Trying's not an action, right? You can't try. So we call this idea of doing or not doing the point of power. And you're either above or below the point. And below the point people do three things. Call these out for me. What do they do? What do they, they make what? Blame, excuses, and denial. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, the blame folks, right? So any, who do they blame? They blame anyone they can, right? Right now during this pandemic, I, I hear a lot of business owners who blame the virus, who blame the government for, for shutting down businesses, right? Other, other times, other folks that we, folks tend to blame right, their mother-in-law, their staff, their competition, right? So do this for me. Um, point at the screen as if you're blaming me for something. Okay. Now, as you're doing that, tell me how many uh, fingers are pointing back at yourself? Three. Yeah. So as you think about that, um, what does that say about who has the bigger control over the situation? Yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So the, the next thing that people do when they're below the point of power is they make excuses as you guys called out. So how many, do you guys know kids who are experts at giving excuses? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, where do you think that they, they learn that from? We, we learn it from the people that are teaching us and modeling it. So again, 
um, life is a mirror. If we're not getting the reaction that we hope to, we need to look at ourselves, right? The last thing people do below the point of power is they live in a state of denial. These people are toxic to uh, your work environment and need to be removed. So notice that blame excuses and denial can be summed up as bad. These people stay trapped in the proverbial bed of life, okay? In, in contrast, people who are above the point of power, they take at their oar of life and they chart their own course by taking ownership, being accountable and being responsible for the things that are going on in their life. So instead of pointing and making excuses and denying, they say, hey, yeah, the environment right now does suck and the COVID situation is horrible. And yes, there's been shutdowns, but I'm not just gonna duck my head in the sand and wait until it's all done. I'm gonna pivot and find ways to make my business uh, be able to survive through this and come out stronger on the other end and, and start to thrive, right? They're, they're taking ownership, accountability, and responsibility for their business and, and doing whatever it takes to make their business successful. So overall, right, everybody has a choice. You can either choose to be powerless, right, or you can choose to be powerful. And this is a daily choice. So can I get you guys agreement that you're going to be willing to play above the point of power, at least for tonight? For sure. Absolutely. Wonderful. That's fantastic. So even if we make that commitment to ourselves that we're going to live above the point of power, we're not going to be perfect all the time. There's going to be situations that happen where we get that punch in the gut that knocks the wind out of us or, or a surprise that we didn't see coming and it's going to knock us down below the point of power. Um, and I, I've got a good example of this. I remember one day I was in a meeting with a couple of the owners of the company I worked for and some of the leadership team. And one of the VPs said something that just really, really upset me so much so that I excused myself from the meeting. I went to my office, packed up all my stuff when I got in my car and started driving home. And then I started to think about what was I going to tell my wife when I got home and, uh, and thought that that probably wasn't going to work out so well. So I, I did a U-turn, you know, went back to work, went back into the meeting with my tail between my legs, apologized for stepping out. And, and fortunately I kept my job. So the reason I share that is we're going to find ourselves below the point of power. And the most important thing is to recognize it and do the next best thing. Take the next best action that pulls us above the point, back above the point of power. So uh, anyone know, teenage kids who are experts at saying, I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, I, we, uh, in our here, my, uh, my 13 year old stepson, he, uh, mom will tell him all the time, remind him of something that he always forgets. And he'll be like, yeah, I know mom. And then he'll go ahead and forget it. So when we get older, we're, we're not as bold about it. Instead of, you know, saying, I know we may, we do it a little more politely. We may cross our arms in a meeting, right? We may say it under our breath, or we may just roll our eyes. But this, this approach of saying, I know, kills the possibility that maybe you can learn something from the conversation. You're actually telling your reticular activating system that there's no value in that conversation, and it should, sh should stop listening and go work on the other things that you told it that are more important. So um, instead of saying, I know, can I get agreement that you guys are going to uh, replace that with something better? And, and I suggest something like, isn't that interesting? So uh, by a yes, uh, you guys open to the, the idea of keeping your mind open to learning and, and stopping to say, I know. I like it. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. And then finally... To get the most out of any learning environment, you must be willing to have some what? Shout this out for me. Fun. fun. Yeah, fun because as you guys know, business is hard, right? There, it, it can be a roller coaster. And so it's important to make sure that we're having fun along the way. Too many folks that I talk to uh, think in their mind that they should save it up. Well, when I get that home run, or I hit the, that my annual goal, 
then we'll have a big celebration. Well, the problem with that is, is that that's a long time to wait. So instead, think about what can you do weekly to celebrate the weekly wins? What can you do daily to celebrate the daily wins so that work becomes fun and enjoyable and something that you're, you look forward to on a daily basis because momentum causes more momentum, right? It becomes that snowball effect. If, if you're enjoying work and you're celebrating daily and you're, you're excited about the things that you're accomplishing, focusing on base hits instead of home runs creates that snowball effect and makes, it, makes more wins come because you're now teeing up your, your reticular activating system. So something we do here, a very you know, small insignificant thing is, is Friday nights are pizza and movie nights. All right, so that's a way for us to celebrate the end of the work week and transition into the weekend. So give some thought to uh, what kinds of daily and, and weekly wins and celebrations can you incorporate into your business. All right, so there's two types of businesses. The first is where the business is driving you. The, um, in this situation, the business owner has their hand in all the day-to-day -day activities, all decision need to be made by the owner. No one can do the job as well as them. And they're generally working 60, 70, 80 or more hours a week. The other type of business is where the business owner is driving the business. They have a team that takes care of the day to day and things run very smoothly. And the owner is able to duck out early to see their kids in a school activity or have a four day uh, weekend or take two weeks off for vacation without worry. How many of you guys know people who have uh, given up running their business to go back to a job because they got burnt out? You guys know anyone like that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, um, most business owners have only bought themselves a job. And in the job, they're working more hours and making less money than when they worked for someone else. And over time, this learns to, lear, leads to burnout. Um, and there's way too many businesses that go out of business. In fact, about 80% of new businesses go out of business within five years. And the number one reason for that is, is burnout. So our goal is to move beyond being self-employed and climb up the entrepreneurial ladder from employee to self-employed to manager to business owner to investor and to entrepreneur. So get out of, of uh, that having just bought ourselves a job and be a true business owner. So let me talk about how we get here. So uh, this formula for change is D times V plus F has to be greater than R. R is our resistance to change. So we all like our status quo, we all like our comfort zone, and we are creatures of habit and resist change. So in order to overcome our preference for our comfort zone, we need to understand how dissatisfied we are with our current situation times a vision of what a better tomorrow could look like, plus an understanding of the first steps to get there. And basically, we need to ensure that the left-hand side of this formula is bigger, greater than our resistance to change. So if we ever find ourselves not wanting to change, we really need to dig into the left-hand side and really understand how dissatisfied we are. And, and feel that pain and, and really get an understanding of how bad that is and what the impact of that situation has on, on ourselves and our family. And then we need to un really paint a picture of what could a better tomorrow look like and, and what might that be if I, you know, if I could be home for dinner at five or six o'clock every day and I could go on two weeks of vacation and I didn't have to miss out on my family's um, at my school, my kids' uh, school events, et cetera. And then really is like, well, what does it look like to get there, right? What are the first steps to get there? 
So I want to congratulate you, you for actually taking that first step of coming onto this webinar tonight, because I'm going to show you, you know, what those first steps look like. And you took the first step by signing up for this. So a better tomorrow in, uh, in action coach world, we define a successful business differently than most. To us, a successful business is a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you, the business owner. It's not about buying ourselves a job. It's, be, it's about becoming a business owner of a successful business. And we have a methodology to get there. We call it the six steps to building a better business. And I'm gonna walk through that uh, now. So. The first step, call that out for me. What's that? What's step one? Mastery. Yeah, mastery, business mastery. So how do we know if we're a master at something? Well, it's usually because somebody comes and asks, asks you to teach them how to do it, right? Well, here's the problem when people start a business. Do you think that they're masters of running a business? No, they're actually masters at carpentry or masters at baking or engineering or a master of being an accountant or a master of being a lawyer or whatever their art or their craft or their trade is. So instead, you need to become a master at running a business. This is all about eliminating the day-to-day -day chaos in the business. Then we move up to step two. Call that one out for me. Niche. Yeah, niche or niche, however you, you want to pronounce it. Um, so we must have a, a niche in our business. And how do we know if we don't have a niche in the, in the marketplace? We don't have a niche if we're competing on price. The day that you compete on price, you don't have a niche. So this is all about marketing to bring in a predictable cash flow. Then step three, what is this one? Call it out for me. Leverage. Yeah, leverage. So leverage, the key to leverage in business is systems. Um, so it'll be up to everyone to help systematize the company. This will buy us back our time, make the, the company run more efficiently and effectively. Then we build a team. Then we ultimately, we hit synergy where one plus one equals more than two, right? We're, get, we're starting to get some results here. Um, and then we hit the end goal of whatever that you want your business to be when it's done. So this is the six steps to, that we need to get massive results and grow. But here's my challenge with that. Do you think the average business owner is missing one or two of these things? For sure. Yeah, absolutely. So let me dig into this in a little bit more detail. I'm gonna go through each step one by one. So back to our definition um, of a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. At the mastery level, it's all about building a commercial enterprise. And there's four areas of mastery that we focus on. First is destination mastery. This is all about beginning with the end in mind. What does your company look like when it's done? What year is it done? What's the revenue and profit level when it's done? How many employees are there? And then you work backwards from that and say, okay, well, what does that look like in five years from now, in one year from now, and quarterly? And you've got uh, trackers in place to know whether you are delivering against those goals or not. I had a client um, that said that they wanted to grow to, to a million dollar business in five years, but didn't have any goals in place to get there. So that's where we started is, is to put those goals. Um, and now she's starting to track herself against delivering those goals on a, on a monthly basis. Money mastery is the second area that we focus on. This is all about understanding the financials of your business. So things like having a monthly profit and loss statement, having a monthly balance sheet, doing cash flow projections four to 12 weeks out so that you know what the financial health of your business is and you're able to make good solid business decisions based on your financials. So uh, I worked with a client uh, when I first started working with them said, Hey, Tim, I just give all my stuff to the accountant at the end of the year, and I hope that we made money. Um, and we all know the, the idea of uh, you know, what hope means, right? So now we've put a, a more disciplined process in place where uh, she's able to understand uh, the financials of her business and, and be able to make good business decisions. Third is time mastery. This is all about knowing where you're spending your time and understanding if 
where you're spending your time is the best use of your time. So by doing a time study, we can determine right, where are you focusing your, your energies and is that where you, sh you as the business owner should be spending your time or should some of those things be outsourced or delegated to free you up to focus on more important pieces of your business. You know, the, the thing I, uh, I hear from business owners a lot when we talk about working on your business instead of in your businesses is I say you need to be able to commit to four to five hours of, of working on your business a week. Most people can't imagine how they could find four to five hours. So by doing that time study, we easily find that by redirecting them on things they should be focusing on instead of some of the things they are focusing on. And then finally is delivery mastery. This is all about um, providing great customer service and having a mechanism in place to track whether you are providing great customer service or not, right? Some type of survey or, or ongoing feedback. Most business owners I talk to assume that they are doing great here, um, but the problem is no one's going to tell you that you're not doing great. They're just going to fire you or leave you at some point in time. So we want to make sure that we're absolutely nailing this before we start increasing our marketing and, and growing our business. So then we move up to step two, which is niche back to our definition. So niche now is all about building a commercial profitable enterprise. And the, the way that we're getting to that profitable is that we are not competing on price. So I said earlier that niche is all about not competing on price. If the only reason that your company exists is because you're, the, you're offering the best price in the marketplace, you're actually setting yourself up for bankruptcy. Eventually, someone's going to be willing to undercut you to steal share and then it becomes a death spiral to the bottom. So um, I know there's a lot of uh, concern that I hear about raising prices. Um, but here's the thing, we've done some, uh, some surveys where to, we've asked, you know, what is the most important thing to, to you in terms of uh, making a purchasing decision? And the assumption by most business owners I talk to is that it's gonna be price. But here's the thing, on this survey, um, price was only about 10% of the reason that people buy with service and liking the salespeople coming much higher on the list. Wow. So, so the, the, the two areas that you focus on in terms of differentiating yourself from, from your competitors and not having to compete on price is first having a unique selling proposition. Right? What clearly differentiates you from your competitors that makes you unique, makes you different, and enables you to justify the price that you're charging? Right? Gives you a sustainable business model and what this means is, right, you're not going to satisfy everybody, but you carve out a niche in the marketplace of the people that are your ideal clients or your ideal customers who are willing to pay the price that makes you have a sustainable business model. The second area to focus on is a guarantee. Okay? So think about what is the number one barrier of your customer or your client buying from you, and then write a guarantee that overcomes that hurdle. So for example, the number one challenge or hurdle for uh, business owners uh, hiring me as their business coach is, well, what if it doesn't work? And so we have a guarantee. With one-on-one -on -one clients, our guarantee is that within 17 weeks of working together, your business will grow enough to pay for my fees or I keep working for free until it does. So as you can see from that, I, I've completely uh, eliminated their concern by guaranteeing that it's no longer a concern. Right? So think about how you can offer a guarantee in your business. And if, if you can't find one that's, uh, that's as significant as what I just explained or described to you, then Find something that you have to provide by law in your industry and then just guarantee that because chances are your competitors aren't making a guarantee. So simply by having a guarantee, you're still going to differentiate yourself. 
So the other thing that we do um, in this niche area, this marketing and sales, is we test and measure everything. Okay? We test and measure everything because we don't want to leave stuff to chance. If we're spending money on marketing activities or sales activities, we want to know that there's an ROI. And so when I start working with clients, I, we set up a process to be able to test and measure all the things that they're spending money on. And here's an example of why we do that. Um, I had a client who, or I have a client who before they were a client, um, told me that they spent their entire marketing budget on a magazine ad and it wasn't working for them. And unfortunately, they signed up for an 18 month contract and now they're stuck, right? So our approach is to start small, spend a little bit of money on new programs, new unproven programs, test and measure to determine whether they're gonna be effective for you. And then when, once they've become effective, then you can spend more against them. Or like I said earlier, if that program is offering a guarantee, then you can go all in because you have nothing to lose because the, the vendor is providing a guarantee. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once we learn things that are working well for us, then we can invest more because we know that they're working. So let me go into our marketing and sales approach in a little bit more detail. The next thing in niche that we talk about is our tool called the five ways to massive profits. Let me explain how this works. So most business owners know how many customers they have, they know what their revenue is, and they know how much profit they make. Which one of these do you think is the most important? How much profit they make. Okay. Jay? Um, profit. Okay. Well, it's actually a trick question. None of these are the most important because they're just results. So you can't actually go out tomorrow and get more profit right? or get more customers or get more revenue. So this is where the five ways formula gets really exciting. What you can do is you can go out and get more leads. You can improve your conversion rate you can increase your repeat business or number of transactions, you can improve your average dollar sale, and you can improve your profit margin. When you focus on those five areas, the results will be more customers, more revenue, and more profit. Does that make sense? Right, right. So let me talk you through, I'll give you an example here just to bring a little bit of context to this. So in this example, uh, they had 4,000 leads. So we define a lead as somebody who has come through your marketing funnel far enough that they're, they're ready to make a purchasing decision. So in this example, let's say there's 4,000 leads. Conversion rate is the percentage of those leads who become customers. So in this example, 25%. So 4,000 leads times 25% conversion rate equals 1,000 customers. Okay. Number of transactions, as I said earlier, is a indication of repeat business. So on average, how many times a year do these customers buy from you? So let's say it's two times a year, right? Some customers may only buy from you one time. Some customers may buy from you 10 times, but on average, there it's two. Okay. Average dollar sale on each of those transactions, on average, how much do those customers spend? So again, some customers may only spend $10, some customers may spend 1,000, but on average, let's say it's 100. So we've got 1,000 customers, they, they buy two times a year and they spend $100 each time. So that means we've got $200,000 in revenue. Profit margin, let's say it's 25%, so then our profit would be $50,000. Do you guys understand how that formula works? Mm -hmm. All right, great. So um, we actually have over 350 strategies across these five ways that when you become a client, one of the first exercises is look at this list and determine 
you know, cross off things that don't apply to your industry, cross off things you may have tried in the past that didn't work, but most importantly, identify one or two, maybe three strategies in each of the five areas that you wanna implement and test and measure on your business over the next 12 months. So I'm gonna come back to this uh, formula in after I go through the rest of the six steps to show uh, how, how powerful this is. But before I go there, let me ask a question. How many, do you guys know these numbers in your business, these five areas? So usually I hear no. And uh, so then the question I ask is, well, if you don't know your numbers, right, then how, how, how difficult is it going to be to grow if those, if those five areas are the levers to growth, right? And so most important thing is to, to get to understand your numbers this way so that you can start to focus on them. So let me go through the rest of the six steps and then we'll come back and, and look at the impact of implementing uh, these strategies into this example business. So after niche or our marketing and sales activities, we move up to step three, which is leverage. Back to our definition, leverage is a commercial profitable enterprise that works. And the reason that it works is because leverage is all about systems. And we define systems as saving yourself time, energy, and money. About 80% of the things that we do in our business are routine, right? And so what we want to do is systematize the routine in order to allow us to become more efficient and effective. So when, when you guys used to have a, uh, a destination that you drove to um, every day for work, did you um, take the same route or did you take a different route every time? Same route. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why, so why did you do that? Shortest path. Yeah. And as you were driving back and forth to work the same way every day, what were you doing while you were driving? What was your mind focused on? Just getting back home. Yeah. Were you thinking about path. driving or were you thinking about other stuff? Mainly other stuff. Yeah. And why, why were you able to think of other stuff while you were driving the same way? Because the path is so familiar. Yeah, absolutely. So think about that in your business, right? If you can create routines if you can create paths that are so similar and so familiar, do you think that would make your business run more efficiently and effectively? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So while people are doing routine work by following a system or a process, they're able to be more efficient. They're able to multitask. So there's nine area, there's nine steps that we focus on to systematize the business, right? To, capture the, that 80% of the business that's routine. So first is developing a vision statement for your company. Right? This is something aspirational, inspirational, the greater good that your company, why you're in business, the greater purpose of your company. A vision statement, the how your business is going to be it to operate, to be able to achieve that vision. Culture statements, right? What is the culture of your business? What are your values and your beliefs? These all need to be written out so that you are able to share them and get people excited about what your, your company is all about. Having smart goals for your organization, like we talked about earlier with the reticular activating system, but also using the smart principles of specific, measurable, um, uh, attainable, results-oriented with a time frame. Having an organization chart of what does your business look like when it's done? What are all the roles that are going to be needed in your company? And then having position contracts or job descriptions for each of those roles. Right? So that as your business starts to build, you don't get slowed down by having to figure out what the next position is. You already know, based on doing this homework, that when you reach a certain revenue level, you know it's time to hire employee number five 
and you've already done the pre-work so that you can just hit go. Having key performance indicators for all positions within the company so that they know how they're gonna be measured, what success looks like, and know how, how you're gonna rate them and determine whether or not they're doing their jobs well. And then having how-to systems for every, every operation within the company so that people can refer to these to know how to do something. So generally speaking, like I said earlier, right? If, if you just sit and listen to what I, I'm, I'm sharing with you tonight, you'll only retain about 7%. So imagine that same principle when we teach, uh, when we're training a new hire, right? If, if they just listen to what we train them on, they're gonna only remember 7% of it. So it's gotta be written down or it's gotta be in a video that they can refer back to when they forget and at least get them up to right, that 50% or ideally that 98% by them learning and, and practicing while they're learning and having hands-on training. And then finally, an overall management system of like, how are you gonna manage your company? What types of meetings are you gonna have? How are people gonna get feedback and whether they're performing against expectations or not? How are people gonna get paid? How often do they get paid? All of that also needs to be determined so that you are not scrambling and trying to figure it out as you go. All right, so then we move up to team. And now back to our definition, we have a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you, the business owner. And the reason that it can work without you is because we now have a team in place. So it's all about getting the right people on the bus and ensuring that they're sitting in the right seat on the bus. So when we've got the right people on the bus, meaning they're aligned to your vision and your culture, they're now working for you because they believe in the greater good of your organization. Sitting in the right seat on the bus means they've got the right skills and experiences to, to do the job. So when you have that, you as the business owner can focus on two things. One is providing the strategic direction to the organization. And second is to take care of the team. When you take care of the team, the team can take, will take care of the customers. You no longer have to be juggling multiple balls and wearing multiple hats. The team will take care of your customers. When the customers are taken care of, they'll take care of your business through repeat business and referrals. And then the business ultimately takes care of you because it is now providing profits for you, the business owner, to be able to provide the lifestyle that you want. So then we move up to synergy. The fifth step here is synergy. This is when everything starts to click in your business. Right? One plus one starts to equal more than two. Right? You're starting to develop a well-oiled machine and you can start to think about what's next. Right? You're getting some passive income generated from this business and you've got some options now. Right? You can start to think about, well, maybe I wanna open another location. Maybe I wanna start another business. Maybe I wanna sell this business right? because it's now sellable because it runs without you. An investor won't, will not buy a business that the only reason it works is because the business owner is working 80 hours a week. But they will buy a business that is able to run without them because now it's an investment instead of buying themselves a job. And then results, ultimately the final step is, is you're now at that investor level where this business runs without you, you're, you're starting to buy other business or investing in the the stock market or buying real estate, right? You're getting multiple streams of passive income starting on your way to becoming a true entrepreneur. So these are the six steps to uh, massive results. But remember, to achieve massive results, you must take massive action. So let's come back and revisit this little business that I shared with you earlier. We know that just by implementing this five ways tracker into our client's business, that they see a, an increase on average of 10% in each of the five areas annually. 
And the reason for that is because what gets measured, what gets tracked, gets focus and energy and improvements come naturally. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. On top of that, as I said earlier, we've got 350 proven strategies across those five areas of things that you can implement in your business to get beyond that 10% increase. So do you think it, it, it's possible then to have a 10% increase in each of those five areas, number of leads, conversion rate, number of transactions, average dollar sale and profit margins over a 12-month period? For sure. Okay. So let me show you what that'll look like. Um, so number of leads goes from 4,000, 10% increase would go up to 4,400. So a couple uh, strategies in terms of how can we improve the number of leads that we get. So first is by implementing what we call a 10 by 10 marketing strategy. That is coming up with 10 different marketing strategies that um, are going to generate uh, more leads for us. Uh, one of those strategies, for example, could be reaching out to our happy customers or happy clients and asking them to refer somebody that they know. Okay. Conversion rate. Uh, a way to in easily increase our conversion rate is to get testimonials from our happy customers and use those with new, with new leads, new prospects. Show them other people who have said they're really happy with us and that helps new people to feel more comfortable working with us. So a 10% increase here would move it up to 27.5. So notice it's not a 10 point increase, it's just a 10%. So 4,400 times 27.5 takes our customer count up to 1,210. Number of transactions, if we improve that by 10%, it goes from two to 2.2. So easy way to increase number of transactions is to remind people that they haven't bought from us. So let's think of a, a hair salon as a good example. We probably all, all have a set number of weeks that we should get our hair cut. So for me, it's every four weeks but I don't go every four weeks because I forget and life gets busy. So if the hair salon actually was to book my next appointment bef before I left uh, and lock it on calendars, chances are I'm going to actually go every four weeks. Right? And so that's a way to increase number of transactions because I'm not slipping and, and going every five or six weeks. I'm going every four weeks. Does that make sense guys? Mm -hmm. So then average uh, dollar sale, 10% increase here is 100 to 110. One strategy here, think about McDonald's. What does the uh, cashier say to everybody after they place their order? Do you guys know what, the, what they ask everybody after you place your order at McDonald's? They're up Anything them. else? Yeah, would you like fries with that? Would you like a, a, a drink with that? Would you like to upsize your, your fries or your drink? Absolutely. So think about in your business, what can you upsell? If you don't have an upsell, I would write that down as one of your homework assignments is make sure you have an upsell because some percentage of everybody is going to say yes. All right. So um, with these new numbers, 1,210 customers, 2.2 transactions, 110 average dollar sale, revenue goes up to 292,820. Profit margins, same 10% increase, uh, goes up to 27.5. Easiest way to improve your profit margin is a price increase. And remember, we talked it earlier that everybody's afraid to take a price increase, but, um, but the reality is most customers don't even notice it. And if they're buying from you based on you are providing great customer service and they know, like, and trust you, the price is not going to be important. In fact, you're going to lose some of your D customers who are your biggest pain in the butts and it's going to free up capacity to bring on more A customers. So overall, it becomes a win-win for you. So if you're not taking price increases every year, that's another, uh, write that down, make sure that you're taking price increase every year because um, our prices, our costs go up every year. So we need to be passing that along to our clients or our customers. So uh, 292,820 times 27.5 profit goes up to 80,525. 
So here's the really cool thing about this formula. It's a multiplication formula, not an addition. So customers went up 21%, revenue goes up 46%, profit goes up 61%. So how many would like to have a profit increase of 61% uh, over the next 12 months? Wouldn't mind it. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Who wouldn't, right? So let's look at if we were to do this same thing over a five year period by just simply improving each of those line items by five, uh, 10%, let's see what the overall impact would be on the business, okay? So year two, profits would go up 159% uh, from that $50,000 number. Okay? Year three, again, 10% increase in each of the, the five areas, the blue lines, profit goes up 317%. Year four, 571%. And year five, customers up 159%, revenue up 573%, and profit up almost 1,000%. So would you guys like to have a 1,000% increase in your profit over the next five years? That'd be nice. Or almost $500,000, half a million dollar improvement? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. yeah. These are the kind of numbers that, uh, that our clients see every year because of the discipline of the six steps methodology that I talked you through, as well as tracking their numbers and making sure that they're testing and measuring the activities that they're doing. So instead of leaving things to chance, it's a very focused, disciplined approach. It's taking best practices of how great companies run and implementing it into your business. So I'm gonna end here with a couple of quotes. First is Richard Branson. So he says, if you can learn to run one business successfully, there's no reason you can't run any number of businesses at the same time because the principles are still the same. So think about a car and uh, the chassis of some cars where you know, there's multiple cars that use the same chassis, right? And the idea there is because it's more efficient and effective. Same principle applies here. The six steps and the five ways are the chassis to running great businesses. So once you learn those two models, it's very easy to implement it into business number two or three or four and create a number of great businesses that are able to run without you. Jim Rohn says, never wish that your life were easier, wish that you were better. He says, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. We have a, a formula for success called B times do equals have. So we all want to have a certain lifestyle. We all want to have certain things in life. And those of us who have gone into business for ourselves made a decision that we think that the best path to having those things in life is to work for ourselves instead of working for someone else. And generally the, th the three things that I hear are freedom, flexibility, and wealth. Okay. However, the mistake most small, medium sized business owners make is that they focus all their energy on doing, right? I'm going to work harder. I'm going to do more. I'm going to work longer. Right? And that leads to the burnout that I talked about earlier. Instead, we should be focusing on becoming the type of business owner that can run a successful business. So focusing more time on learning how to be a great business owner, focusing on learning how to implement great systems and processes and procedures into our business, how to hire and retain great employees, how to encourage and motivate great employees so that they can do the day-to-day -day for us. And Brad Sugars, our, our founder and CEO, says where you'll be in five years will depend on the books you read, the people you associate with, and the actions you take. You're, we're either growing or we're dying. Our business is either growing or, are, or dying. Us as, as business owners are either growing or dying. So think about this one. You will be the average of the five people you spend the most time with. 
professionally. And so what books are you reading? What videos are you watching? What seminars or conferences are you attending? What experts are you surrounding yourself with? What investments are you making into yourself to allow you to grow and develop as a business owner so that you can take your business to the next level? And then finally, Tiger Woods says that no matter how tough you think you are, you can't do this alone. And he's talking about the value that his coach and support team have been to him and his journey. Sports is a great analogy of, if you think about it, there's no professional athlete who doesn't have at least one coach and most have multiple coaches. So in order to excel in sports, people hire coaches. The same principle applies in business, right? There are certain pieces of the business that, that we aren't experts in. And so we will significantly benefit by hiring experts to help us accelerate our learning curve and help us to be at the best uh, that we can be. So let's go back to the reticular activating system that I talked about earlier and think about the goal that you set for yourself in terms of what you want to learn this evening. Did everybody, did you guys learn at least one thing? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. How about three things? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want you to do. Since we're all about taking action, I want you to make sure that you write down those one or three things that you learned. And more importantly, the number one action that you're going to apply to your business moving forward. So go ahead and do that while, uh, while it's still fresh in your mind so you don't lose it. So while you guys are doing that, um, at this point, there's, there's usually two directions that uh, folks can go after going through this seminar. But remember at the beginning, I mentioned that, uh, that I'd be giving you an offer that you'd be crazy to take it take action on well some people after going through this say hey Tim you know this has been fantastic I I got a lot of great information I love what I learned I took a ton of notes and I'm gonna take it from here I'm gonna implement this stuff in my business and that's awesome please do that make sure that you've written written those actions down and that you hold yourself accountable to doing that or for those of you who want to get massive results, you might be asking, hey, Tim, how do I get more details about what you learned and, and how do I apply this to my business more concretely? Right? What are my options? So this is what we do. As your business coach, I work with you to implement the six steps we just talked through into your business. You know, I become your uncomfortable friend who pushes you when you need a kick in the butt, right? who confronts you when you are in blame excuses and denial, and who reminds you of your end game when things get tough and you wanna quit. Because yes, business is hard, and there will be times that you wanna quit. Just like a sports coach who continually pushes folks to excel, you'll have hired me to do the same with you, so that you can achieve the business successes that you want to be able to realize the personal dreams you have. So if you choose the second option, if you want massive results and you're ready to do whatever it takes to get there, I've got a special offer for you. As a thank you for watching this virtual seminar, you can have a complimentary coaching session with me valued at $1,500. Now, I have a, a limited number of these that I offer each month. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, you're going to want to take advantage of this right away. Now, the way that this works is it starts with a brief questionnaire, tells me a little bit about your, your business um, so that I can have some background. And then we get together for up to two hours to do a deep dive into your business to show you how our methods will help you and help you determine if coaching is right for you. And then at the end of that session, if we both agree that it makes sense, and what I mean by both agree is I choose my clients just as much as you should be choosing your coach. So if we both determine that we, that we think it makes sense to work together, I'll ask you to make a decision about which coaching program is right for you. Look, my passion is growing businesses and coaching business leaders. So 
I guarantee that you'll walk away with, from that coaching session with at least one strategy that you can apply to your business right away. Even if you decide coaching is not right for you, you're going to get a tremendous amount of value out of going through that process. So if you want to take advantage of that, um, please send me a message and I'll get you, uh, get you some information and, and get you scheduled for that right away. So uh, guys, now it's time to take action and uh, implement that, one, that number one thing that you wrote down. And here's where many people fail. Right? They fail to follow through on that number one action because they don't have someone to hold you accountable. So if you don't have someone to hold you accountable, if you don't have a process to, to ensure that you're going to follow through on that, make another note to yourself to get that in place right away. Don't just put your notes on, on the side of your desk and forget about it because then you've basically wasted you know, an hour and a half of your time. So I highly encourage you to make sure that you take what you learned this evening and implement it into your business. So that concludes the, the seminar. Any questions from, from you guys on anything we talked about? Not on the top of my head, no. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, fantastic. Well, if anything comes to mind after the fact, uh, please email me or give me a, sh a call and happy to, to jump on a, a call and talk through it. If you wanna take advantage of the complimentary coaching session as well, uh, reach out to me, let me know, and we'll get that blocked on calendars.